everybody. I was going to show a little uh, tooling tutorial today. Uh, please excuse me. I am still sick, so I still do have the sniffles. But I wanted to show you guys just the basics of what you do when you tool. Um, most of what I'm going to be doing is tooling, or tooling, uh, uh, beveling. Um, since this is a going to be a sash. I got to bevel this inside edge. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. But that inside edge right there where I've already done my swivel knife cut. I kind of wanted just to make a video for the entire thing. But um, I'm going to do bevel to about right here and then I'm going to cut to when I'm finished. But uh, first you got to case your leather just use this tiny little spray bottle. I'm just gonna case maybe the half of it. Um, and then you just spray the back. And on the back I like to wet it a little extra. That's just kind of the way I was taught. And then you gotta let, for casing, you basically what it is, is you're wetting the leather and you're trying to get the leather to the maximum malleableness, that's even a word, um, to where it can be like manipulated by the tools the best. And the prime, like when you know it's cased, is when you've wet it down and then it returns right back to its normal color, which can take a few minutes. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and start tooling. Usually you'll just wait for it to return back to that natural tan, but it's whatever. Oh. And this block that I got is brand new, or I say brand new, but it's not really new. I got it from school, and I'm going to see how it works. I believe it's HDP, could be Dell, I have no idea, but... Basically, when you, you, you're beveling, your tool has this kind of, well, let's see if I can get in the camera, uh, this, dang it, uh, this kind of a bevel to it, and that long, the longest point is what you put in that groove, and then you just kind of work your way along the groove with the hammer. I'm probably going to switch between hammers just because I got this new, very nice, non-marring maul from Tandy. I got a really good deal on it. I'm really happy with it, but it's a little he too heavy for me right now. So I'm probably gonna start with my standard rubber mallet for right now, and then later work with that. Basically, you just kind of tap and slowly bring the tool towards you. And I'm not pushing down on the tool whatsoever. I am just holding it in that moving it up. I don't know if you can see it, but I kind of went out of line, which will happen when you're not paying attention. I like to go a few inches and then pick my hand up and start again. This is a lot easier when you've got a fresh swivel knife cut. This thing's been sitting out for a few days, so it seems the leather's kind of almost shrunk around those cuts. Alright, so I'm going to cut to finishing to when I'm finished with all that, and then I'll get back to you. Alright, so I finished beveling everything. It looks kind of bad my opinion, at least certainly not my best beveling. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this handy dandy tool, which is called a spoon beveler. It has like two shallow spoons, one big, one small on this one. Uh, there's ones that are bigger than this one, but this is just the one that I have. Usually you use it for like figure carving where you've got tiny little spaces that you can't get into uh, with 
the stamp bevelers. But um, right now, I'm going to use this to do a little cheating, as some might call it, and smooth out my bevels with it. Now, um, the way you use the spoon beveler is like almost exact, like the casing is exactly the same process and stuff. But you take the spoon and you want that curve facing up towards you and you take the tip of it and press it into the groove and just press and pull towards you. And you want to do that in a very smooth motion or else you'll get like lumps and stuff and you want to go slow enough to where you're not going to just jump the lines on the borders because I, I do that all the freaking time and it is annoying or sometimes I'll pull it this way into the leather it's into the inside and that also looks terrible because it's extremely hard to get rid of that indention especially once your leather is cased properly but just from a couple passes on each side you can tell already that it is way smoother I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it is tremendously sm way smoother, way more even. Now, when I uh, beveled this, I pulled a rookie mistake and had the tool tilted kind of forward instead of straight up and down perpendicular to the leather like you're supposed to. So my bevel is way shallower than it should be. But that's okay for my application, because it's just a belt. And most of the time, anyways, people just use a spoon beveler instead of actually stamp beveling. Mainly because it's less time consuming, doesn't require nearly as much practice to get the hang of, and your hand doesn't cramp up when you're holding the tool. Which, if you start leather working, you'll find that your hands will cramp up way way too much for your liking when you start using stamps I'm almost out of water but something I for also forgot to mention is when you're doing a lot of tooling on a small surface especially if you're backgrounding you want to tape the back of your leather to prevent it from cupping. I I personally don't do it ever just because I'm lazy and I don't like to do it and most of the time I can kind of bend the leather and, and make it less cupped. But there we go I did it. I went over the border. Now I gotta throw everything away and start all over again. Oh well. But it's super quick and easy to use the spoon beveler. I don't I just feel like I'm cheating whenever I try to just use it for the borders just because it's so much easier to use. And it in my personal opinion I can't get it to go nearly as deep. Get like that flush bevel that goes all the way to the depth of the swivel knife cut like those stamps will. But I find when I use them together, they, it makes everything look really, really nice. Jeez. Having an off day. It's right next to one of the other mess ups. Great. Luckily, it's light enough that I can barely see it. Got that out of the way. Let's start while well, this is still cased. Let's start showing you backgrounding. So I use um, my favorite backgrounding tool now. Like I just got these maybe a month or so ago, but they are called the randomizer tool. I don't know if it can even pick up that texture in the camera. I'm trying to get it really close. But those are the tool you. But oh, I'm not gonna try and throw it back up there. 
um, the two shapes that you're gonna need. You're gonna want the largest tool and the pear-shaped one, or the teardrop-shaped one, rather. Because these are the only two you'll need. There's a third tool that's a medium size of this one. And it's completely unnecessary. You, like, you won't really ever need it because everything that that one can do, this little one can do, or that big one can do. But basically what you do with this is you, you again, have it perpendicular with this small tool. This I use for edges, mainly, to get around there. Why am I using this hand? And you just kind of go in there with this. With the big one, you want to rotate it like a couple degrees each hit so that you get that different effect each time. But for this one, it's not going to matter too much because this is a very, very specifically designed tool to get into small areas. But just place it along curves. When I go to do that A, you'll see that the uh, this tool fit like perfectly inside. But for the most part, this tool is just used for doing edges and inside areas, like right in that bevel that I did. Cause, like when I do all my backgrounding, first I do my beveling because it's way easier to do that when you've got that surface or that groove that you can fit right up into. You don't have to worry about accidentally pressing into one of your letters or other pieces. And also, I forgot to mention, this is the, the beveler that I used is the, one of the pro stamps. The pro stamp, the textured bevelers for the pro stamp series are the only bevelers you will ever need. They're, unless you want to do smooth beveling, which personally I don't. Like, it looks good, but I don't care for it. Um, smooth beveling takes a little bit more time to get used to. Um, and it shows every little flaw. Which is why I would definitely suggest the textured bevelers for beginners. Because it, it just hides all of your mistakes. Well, not all of them, clearly. Because I just demonstrated with my poor beveling skills. But it's it's a very useful tool. I would definitely suggest getting it. That's like one of the few tool, Pro Tool series um, stamps that I have. Um, I got the set of three of the medium, um, or the large, medium, and the small. Those things are lifesavers. And they are extremely useful tools worth the money there I believe they're like $15 a piece as opposed to um, the $10 a piece for the um, regular craft tool stamps at Tandy there are some like my opinion of the Pro Tool, uh, the Pro Tools, is they are very, very good quality, and they have some really, really nice patterns that you you can't really get with the uh, Craft Tool ones. And if anybody doesn't know which ones I'm talking about, the Craft Tools are the cheaper ones, like this one, where you can clearly see that it is just nickel plated and chrome. I believe it's just. Uh, slightly hardened tool steel or something it could be mild steel I don't know but the uh, Pro Tools I believe they are stainless um, they have this very nice brushed finish they are tough as nails I mean I I've, I've seen some of the craft tools break but I have never never seen somebody break one of those um, Pro Tools while tooling. In fact, I don't really know how you even pick a stamp while tooling. Unless you're just like trying to drive it through the leather. So 
Sorry if I'm ranting on, by the way. I'm just trying to find something to mention or worth noting for beginners. I can't remember if I mentioned it, but what I'm doing with this um, small stamp is just background, backgrounding, outlining all these letters um, so that I can prepare to use the large tool. I don't, I don't even know if you can see any of my tooling in that camera from how far it is. That I'm using a GoPro, which doesn't have a zoom, so I can't really zoom in, unfortunately. But I'll bring everything up to the camera. Hopefully you can see what I am doing. Sorry about that, my SD card got full um, while I was waiting for all the stuff to transfer to my laptop, I went ahead and did a little bit more uh, uh, stamping, but I'm going to have to re it because I walked away for a minute. I'm just going to do the front, actually yeah, I should have got enough to do the back. You can already start to see on the back where you can almost see the letters where I've stamped. That's when uh, it starts to cut. And the reason why it starts to cut like that is because you're compressing the leather, not actually like moving it anywhere or removing it. So it doesn't have anywhere to go. It's the same with when you're dishing steel. It compresses instead of... Um, you know, being removed. So it does that weird dishing effect. It's the same basic principle with this. Sorry about that, I had to stop the camera. My mom needed to talk to me about something real quick. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna show you how to do like one section with the backgrounder. That way this isn't like an hour long video. I just got the low battery warning, yay. But anyways, I don't know if this will fit in here properly, but I'm going to give it a try. It's the uh, big randomizer stamp. It just barely fits in there. You gotta remember to turn it a few degrees each turn. Give it a very firm whack. Right now, just covering in some of the bigger areas, and then I'm going to go back with the small tool. Now, this, this is the ideal, like, project to have all three stamps, because for this blank area right here, you need that big, that big stamp, and for these little small areas, you can use the medium stamp. However, when I had on into Tandy to go pick my tools up. They only had these two tools available and sold out of the medium ones. Move that 
one you want. Yes. Perfect. As you can see, there is a distinct randomized pattern, which is like, um, for those who are new to backgrounding, it is a very good tool. It is amazing for sur just large surface area because it, it like quite literally is a random pattern. So you don't have to follow a specific pattern. Like there are backgrounding tools that are made specifically to be used with this textured backgrounder that have a similar texture to it. But those you have to have this smooth, um, like bet, like you have to basically be as smooth as you, um, are when you do your beveling, because if you get like unevenness in it, it's, you're going to see it and it's going to be very, very apparent. Whereas with that randomizer, since it is truly random, because you'll have different spots that are sticking up and some that are, are raised and lowered spots. So there's not, it, it'll hide your unevenness a lot better than any of the other backgrounding tools that I found. But um, for the sake of time, I'm gonna cut short here. Um, uh, for um, other video ideas, I think my next video will be showing how to make a similar mall to this one um, with some plastic uh, that I got from school, which is where I got this thing. But I think it's going to be used, I'm going to be using some glass filled Teflon, mainly because of its density and weight. But um, as far as leather working goes, let me know if you guys want to see more of that or if you guys want to see more. Um, once I'm done with the mall construction, if you guys want to see more uh, tool making videos and such. Um, thank you guys again for your time. Uh, any feedback, very much appreciated. You guys have a good day.